aren't you thankful tonight for the blood of Jesus Christ? You know, I was thinking there last night as we was watching uh, the program, the play that we was watching, and the commandment that Moses gave the children of Israel. And they went out and they put that blood over that doorpost. And I tell you, church, in the world that we're living in, there's a lot of this stuff many people won't never mention in the blood. But they took that and symbolized that and they painted that doorpost red, Brother Allen, over the top and over each side. And I thought, man, I hope they've read their Bible and they don't put that on the door, but only the post. And they did. And I begin to think about that church, the blood of Jesus Christ that sets men free from their sin. And you know, because of what the works that Christ done on the cross of Calvary, you and I have a hope that we can face the future and the things that this world lays out there. If you have your Bible tonight, turn with me to Mark's Gospel, the 12th chapter of the book of Mark tonight. We'll not keep you long. Our battling with sinuses and allergies and that sort of stuff tonight. But I do want to bring this word forth and if, if the Lord be our helper. Mark chapter 12 tonight. Very familiar story here in the word of God. Mark 12 and 41. And it says, And Jesus set over against the treasury, and he beheld at how the people cast money into the treasury, and many that were rich cast in much. And there came a certain poor widow, and she threw in two mites, which make a fatherling. And he called unto him his disciples, and he saith unto them, Verily I say unto you, that this poor widow hath cast in more in than all of they which have cast into the treasury. For all of they did cast in of their abundance, but she of her want did cast in all that she had even all her living. Would you pray with me tonight? Heavenly Father, we thank you again, God, for this wonderful privilege, Lord, that we have to come together tonight in your house. I pray, Lord, tonight that you would help us, God, to deliver this message tonight. Father, we pray that you speak into the hearts and into the lives of each one of us here. Lord, we just pray a special blessing upon the needs that's been brought before you, Lord, here tonight. We pray a touch up over them, and we ask you, Lord, to help us in this part of the service tonight, and God, the remaining part of it. And we'll give all the praise and the glory, all of the honor in Jesus' name tonight. Amen and amen. You may be seated tonight. What a powerful story in the Word of God. Most people would have, I guess, maybe had looked to the Pharisees, Sadducees, and the rulers here at what they had to bring in to the show. But they brought in and they put in, the Bible said they put in an abundance. So that leads me to believe that as far as the money was counting out, they had brought in a great amount. But there was one there that wasn't fitting in really with the crowd per se that was there, but she was willing to do more than all of the rest. She was willing to give all that she had. And I begin to look at that this afternoon and I begin to look at the difference there between the two. I find here that one was willing to give so far and you find that a lot in a lot of different times, but some are willing to give to the place that they can, to the just for so far and that's as far as they're going to go and I'm not talking about money either. They're willing to do so far but they'll only go that way. But this little lady was willing to go all the way in. She's willing to do whatever God would have me to do that I can do it. The Bible said that she put in all of her living and I want you to know something church. She may have not have put in much in a monetary value or the worth of that but it cost her more than anybody 
somebody there that day. You do realize that. I want you to know something tonight. We're living in an age right now, church, that this world's coming to a close and I, I believe that very much so as I look around out there in society today and it isn't any wonder that the Bible tells us that in the latter days men's heart would fail them for fear. There's, I can see that happening right now, church, when you can look around and turn the news on. We was, the miss was telling me last night and was coming back from Branson about a story there of a couple that the, the lady had died in the fires there, I believe it, in California and had passed away from that and it was horrifying just to hear the story of that and it breaks your heart and we hear things of devastation of hurricanes and we hear the devastation of the fire and all the things that happens with that and we look around and we hear the, the, the heartbreak and the heartaches of, of all of the things that's happening in this world. And is it any wonder that in the latter days, the perilous age that we live in, that men's hearts would fail them for the fear of the hour in which we live in. But this little lady was willing in her hour to do of the abundance. She was willing to give of herself of all that she had. I want you to know something tonight. God honors faithfulness. You do realize that. God honors those that are faithful to the kingdom of God. God honors those that are willing to go that extra step in life to just see the things happen. I've looked down and I want you to know something. I admire these folks that are missionaries that are over there on foreign soil tonight. There's many a one of them through the course of time that has got on an airplane or got in a boat or, or went abroad of another country and they've left their citizenship. They walked out of a land of freedom. Now you do realize that in America we do still live in a land of freedom. We live in a world tonight that we were born into this thing, free men and women because we are an American citizen and when we go into another country we're no longer in America and we're no longer that free man that we were here. Those people go knowing, knowing tonight that I'm going into a land where they don't care about my life. I'm going in there. My freedom that I have here in America will be left here when I get on that airplane or when I get on that boat. But they're willing to give in the abundance of their all. They're willing to go into that thing in life. And why is that? It's because of the burning, the longing that they have on the inside of them for that soul there that they would give their heart and their life to Jesus Christ. They see in the face of that little foreign boy and that little foreign girl there. They see on the inside of them that one that needs to know Jesus and they want more than anything for them to hear the gospel message that Jesus Christ saves them. They want more than anything for them to hear that he'll deliver them of all of their idolatry. They want more to they know that he'll do for them all that they might have if they will but turn their life over to him. They're willing to give all, Saint of God. They're willing to suffer. They're willing to even die. There's been many that stepped abroad knowing that I'll never come back. They've wrote down in their journal. They've wrote down in letter that when I leave here, I'll not come back anymore knowing that going there. But on the inside of them was a longing for the things of God more than the things that this free world had. They may have could have stayed in America and lived to be 50 to 100 years longer in life. I have no way of knowing but on the inside of them their desire was to do the will of their father amen their desire was to do the will of God more than it was to please their own self this lady's desire was to do what her Lord wanted her to do more than it was to please the flesh she's willing to trust God with everything that she's got I want you to know something child of God he still desires that for men and women today he still desires that from those that's willing to say Lord not my will but thy will be done Lord that you would use me for your glory saint of God he's still looking for those that will step out there and say God I will be the one that will go I will be the one that will do it church those that will have a desire burning on the inside of their heart for that little boy down the road that don't know Jesus Christ uh, my heart's desire is God again Sir, the church that we've got a desire for 
that one that don't know Jesus Christ, whether they be our friend or no, but we've still got a desire in our heart for them to know God and to experience the love of Jesus Christ, that we'd get humble before God and get on our face and say, Lord, save my neighbor, that we'd pray, God, save the people down the road that I don't even know, that we'd cry out, God, save that nation over there that's lost, that we'd get a burning desire to see God work in our heart and in our life. And church, that must be the cry of the child of God in this end time age because folks is going by the wayside daily, walking out into eternity. The Bible said, and this lady gave all that she had. She was willing to work for the Lord and do for the Lord, if, and it cost her much. And we're not talking about dollars and cents, but she's willing to give of herself to the place that it hurts. Many are willing willing to give as long as it don't cost them anything. And when we say, preacher, that don't make no sense. <laughs> Many are willing to give as long as it don't cost them no problems in their life to do anything. They're willing to go that far. Oh, I'll do, I'll do what I need to do as long as it don't inconvenience me. As long as it don't cause me to have to do anything different than what I'm doing, I'll be willing to do it. But I want you to know something. When she cast in that little amount in that bowl that day and turned and walked away, she didn't have no bank account to go back on. <laughs> she didn't have something back there. There wasn't a 401 one K. There wasn't no there wasn't a retirement check coming next week. Social Security wasn't gonna come in next week. She had no paycheck coming in. She cast in all that she had in the midst of that. But why was that? Because she's going to trust God now. She's going to do the Lord's will. She's going to follow him. She's going to walk with him. She's going to live for him. She's going to do what the Lord would have her do. And God's speaking to her heart now. I want you to know something, child of God. Many want to walk with God to the point where God says, all right, this is the way we're going to do it. And then we find themselves going back and walking with him no more. That's what happened when he spoke to the disciples. When he began to talk with them, he, Jesus asked them, he said, does this offend you? And many, the Bible said, went back and walked no more. When he began to tell them that this is my blood and this is my flesh and you need to eat and to drink this, they were offended in that. A lot of times folks don't ever work for God out of many reasons because of fear being the first and foremost. Many don't do anything for God because of the fear of rejection. Many will never work for God because of just the fear that the enemy places in them, the fear of maybe disappointment. But I want you to know something along this life. There's going to be disappointments. There's going to be heartaches. There's going to be heartbreaks. But I want you to know something. There's no sadder thing than I know of than to think that a person could die lost and they wouldn't have had to if somebody would have told them about Jesus. You talk about a disappointment. You talk about a heartbreak. You talk about something that ought to stir the church. My Lord, may the church of the Lord Jesus Christ get concerned again about people. Come on. May we get concerned again and have a burning zeal for the glory of God again to move in our heart and in our life for because there's a reasoning for that church. There's a reasoning for that. There's a reasoning that we need a burning desire on the inside of us to please God, to work for God, to do what the Lord would have us to do. It's not that I would that I would be uh, noted out there in the world that people would say, oh, this big great somebody done this. No, sir. But it's because that that soul out there that doesn't know Jesus Christ. It's because that little boy there that ne may never hear the gospel message of Jesus Christ. Christ will find somebody that will sit down to him and begin to talk to him and say listen buddy there's a one that loves you even though you don't feel like you love there's one out there that cares about you even though there may not be anybody in this world that will tell you that they love you there's one that loves you enough to die for you his name's Jesus Christ you can receive him as Lord I can tell you something church that needs to be the burning desire on the heart of the believer is to lead men to Christ brother. We're living in the closing hours. We're living in the winding up time. We're living to where this thing's coming down to the end. If we're going to do anything, you're going to put your might in, brother. You better get started in that because this thing is coming to a close right before our very eyes. Amen. Jesus said, Verily I say unto you that this poor widow has cast in more than they all, than all of they. 
I think about that sometimes. When I think about when we have made the final thing, when this thing winds up and it's all said and done, you know it will be one day. It'll be said and done. The Bible tells us that our labor for the Lord is not in vain. Now, sometimes we have to refresh ourselves and to remind ourselves of that right there. But our labor with the, for the Lord is not in vain. I want you to know that somebody. What you do for the kingdom of God is not in vain. We may not see, we may May not see the outcome that we really want to see from that but I'm going to tell you something the Bible tells us very clear that labor is not in vain the Bible tells us that unless the Lord build the house they that do labor they labor in vain so those that, that try to do anything without God their labors are vain but I can tell you this tonight church if we trust in God and we do our best to live for him and we try our best to lead others to him I want you to know something God's going to bless that. But I tell you what I think about one day and in, 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 in the future time there will be. There will be a time when this thing's going to all be said and done. I don't know that it may be tonight. It may be in the days ahead. It will be in the days ahead. I'm convinced of that. But saying of God when we get there we'll stand beside of those that has put in much. Now I want you to think about it with me for a moment of time when that role has been taken out and that role of life has been unrolled. Oh, glory to God. And they begin to tell of the labor, my Lord, that's been done. And they bring a brother and a sister up before the whole congregation of heaven. And they said about, they begin to talk about brother so-and-so and sister so-and-so. Well, they left everything that they had down on this earth. They left it all. And they moved out of a well man home and they left a great job and they left all of their family behind and they went down there to Africa and they moved in out there in the midst of Africa in the bush and they moved in a little hut out there nobody received them out there nobody wanted them out there but God had dealt with them in an altar of prayer God had said I want you to go and they responded God looking down and said they responded when I called when I spoke they gave me an ear and God said they went and as they went there they began to read down and say well here was this one that gave their life to Jesus Christ here was this one that came along and left that life there and turned their life over to the Lord and all of the work that they've done there for the kingdom of God I want you to know something church I want to know that when I stand before my creator I want to know that I've done my part amen I want to know that I've done what he's asked me to do I want to know that when he said go that I went I want to know that when he said say this that I said that I want to know that I'm sensitive to the spirit of, the, of God and sensitive to the leading of the spirit of God why because souls can be weighed in the balance when we're not amen God requires faithfulness of us. And she gave of all that she had to this gospel of Jesus Christ. And he said, for many they did cast in of their abundance. But she of her want did cast in all that she had, even all of her living. Won't it be worth it all, friend, when we stand before him to know that we've done everything God requires of us to do and God asks us to do. I tell you, brother, sister, as I think about that, as I think about the great missionaries, I think about the men of God that stand up in foreign soil and they're hated by, whole, by the whole nation, but they go there in the boldness of God and they preach the gospel. Church, I know that when we come in here in the environment like we are tonight, we've got up tonight, we sung with liberty. Brother Allen led us in testimony. You stood up here in liberty and gave your testimony of the goodness of God and what God had done for you and how 
it blessed you and how much you loved him and you appreciated him. I'm preaching in here tonight with liberty. I want you to know something. There's countries tonight that a service like this would never be able to be held. They stand in dark tunnels. They have a Bible and they've torn out little bits and pieces of that and they'll take that word and memorize it and they'll trade the scripture of the word of God. They trade that Bible around amongst themselves and they memorize that and saying of God we've got more than we can count at the house and on shelves and everywhere else and we don't read the one that we got and they take that word and they cherish it. They honor it. They live by it. Why? Because it's the word of God. These folks that get saved that maybe has the Muslim culture and they turn their life over to Jesus Christ, those folks giving their life to Christ, kneeling at an altar, knowing that death can await them. Knowing that of that, of that, of that other religion that they will kill them because they are announcing that Jesus Christ is Lord. If they confess that they are in the right circumstance, they are certain to die. I want you to know something, church, but that's those that stand up in faith and say I declare Jesus Christ as Lord. I declare him to be the king of kings and the Lord of lords. He saved my soul from hell. I want you to know something child of God their life's on the line but yet they're willing to die for what they believe. I'm going to tell you something friend we'll stand together with those folks one day. We'll stand together with them. And in America, people get crossways because the carpet don't match. And it didn't go right for them. We live in a world right now in third world countries where people are being murdered, killed if they're caught with the Bible. We live in third world countries where they can't even go to the house of God and if they're caught down there, every one of them can be killed. You say, preacher, how in the world does a church exist? Let me tell you how it's existing in those countries. It's growing by leaps and bounds. Amen. But in America, we set at ease and we, we're almost at ease in Zion. That's just what about said. But we set at ease and we, we set by and it's, all, it's wonderful. It goes by. But I can tell you, saint of God, in these third world countries, they're praying for the sick, for blinded eyes to be open. And you know what's happening? Blinded eyes is being opened. They're praying for the deaf ear to be unstopped. And guess what? Deaf ears is being unstopped. People's giving their life to Jesus Christ by the literal hundreds and thousands of people people's coming for the baptism in the Holy Ghost literally by the hundreds and thousands and receiving the blessing of the baptism in the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in other tongues can I tell you something church it's time that in America that we rise up and say oh God we need you to move again we need the power again in us and God we're willing to pay the price because I'm going to tell you something friend it cost this little lady even the two mites but is everything that she had you know why because she wanted to please Christ with all of her heart. We'd rather talk about it than do it. But in these third world countries, they're willing to do it. Because I can tell you something, friend, what lays and waits for them is something far greater than anything this eye hath ever seen. It's far greater than anything that's ever entered into the heart of man. There's a land that awaits them of splendor. There's a land of joy and peace. There's a land of refreshing. And it's a place called heaven. If they walk on with their Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now that's what awaits you and I as well. But I want you to know something tonight, church. We need to realize in this thing where we are. We need to realize that at the opportunity that we have right now. You, what, would, what would happen in some of these third world countries if they had the opportunity that we have tonight? What would happen if they had thousands of dollars of sound equipment? What would happen tonight if they sitting in a, in, a, in, a, in a building like you've got tonight? What would happen tonight? What would happen tonight if they had the, the, the luxury that you and I've got tonight that we've taken for granted, electricity? 
What would happen tonight in, in one of these third world countries if, the, if the, the freedom that we have tonight was there? You couldn't put the people inside of this building that it would hold if they had the freedom that we have tonight in Jasper, Arkansas to come in here and serve Jesus Christ. I've talked to men that give altar calls, has given altar calls, and it would look like a wave as, as people would come from mass crowds. There, there is no building, but they stand in fields, and a wave of people would come and stand in line to be prayed for. And had preachers to tell me, brother, it gets exhausting going down through that praying for people. It is all that you could physically do to stand, to continue on, because of the line would be so great. They'd taken that. They wanted that what God had they wanted what that man delivered to them. they wanted that word that so much so that they were willing to do anything for the word of God and to have the power of the blessings of God saying of God and they're having a revival tonight you know why because they're willing to give all they're willing to give all they're willing to give all of themselves and not just a little portion. Would you bow your heads with me tonight? Oh God, I bless you tonight. And I praise you. I praise you, Lord. I praise you, Lord. I praise you, Jesus. Oh, glory to God. Glory to God. I wonder tonight, first and foremost, in this house tonight, would there be one person in this house tonight that you do not know Jesus Christ? Would there be that one sitting here tonight that maybe you've just never really saw the need or you never have give your life to Jesus, but God's been dealing with you? Spirit of God spoke to your heart and you want to get up tonight from where you're seated at. Come down here to the front of this building and accept Jesus as Lord. Anybody, anywhere, anywhere tonight. Now then, church, I want to ask us a question tonight. I've preached to you people enough to know that if I call for Brother Roger and Brother Kendall to come back up here and I said to you folks, I believe that we need to give in an offering tonight. I know you people well enough to know you're going to write out, you're going to give in abundance. But something tonight. This is a personal question. I'm not asking you for money in any way. But I would ask you who'd be willing to give it all to Jesus. Oh, oh my God. Who'd be willing to say, Lord, I've got to have you. Who'd be willing to say, Lord, I want to be that one that would pray for the lost. I want to be that one, God, that's a light. Maybe there's somebody that's my friend. I want to be willing, Lord, to that one that would, that would, that would pray and that one that would intercede and that one that would seek for revival. I want to be that one, Lord that's willing to give in the abundance to the working of the gospel of Christ. This is how I want to do this altar service tonight. If you physically can't,